But Father, by the Spirit, what you've stirred up here, what's broken free and loose, encouragement, life, we just shake ourselves open to receive what you want to impart and deposit. Make it quick or make it long, whatever you want to do, Father, but we're yours. To the glory of Jesus. Amen. Okay, you got the ping, right? Yes. Any of you ever seen that sign before? Yeah, coming through customs in the category of nothing to declare, right? And I, as I was preparing for this, because we're getting real close now to crossing over into a new year, the whole thing was about that's the way most of us want to go, nothing to declare, right? That means you're not going to really deal with a customs official, just kind of quietly sneak by and hope they don't go, you, you know? <laughs> I'm one of those that feels guilty even when I'm not doing anything wrong, right? Yeah, I'm sure there's something wrong, I, I can't, you know, but nothing conscious, but I'm sure it shows it somewhere. So I think there's a shift that's happening now, and we want to be getting ready. So I'm going to run through some stuff, I hope, fairly quickly here. You ready for it? Say yes. yes. Okay, here we go. So remember, again, we work under a watchman apostolic anointing here, which means we are watching to see what's going on from Issachar is part of the anointing. We move under men who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. Okay, you can't just know the times. What's actionable about that? What can you do? And so we're in a time now when I want to just put another piece of the puzzle together for some of you who who may have been here, may not, but it's always helpful. I want to just talk about the principle of prophetic triggers. Say prophetic triggers. Prophetic triggers. Okay. It works like this. God will put us somewhere and he will show us something and then begin to speak out of it. You ever had that happen? Okay. Maybe it's been a dream. Maybe it's something else. Maybe you're somewhere and suddenly it's like, whoa. And maybe you don't hear a clear, articulate voice, but you see something. It's something there's a, you, you, you get it? There's something in here that goes, wait a minute, God's saying something to me in this. And you attend to it, okay? One of the first examples is with Abraham, right? Then he, being God, Elohim, brought him outside and said, look now towards the heaven and count the stars if you're able to count them. So there he is. And then God speaks and says, so shall your descendants be prophetic trigger, and then the release of the word. And he believed the Lord and accounted him for righteousness. Years later, oh, I, I left out one of my favorite examples, though, and that's the burning bush. You all remember that, right, in Exodus? When he turns aside to see, it's only when he turns aside, it says, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, then the Lord released it. So God will send things to us to see, are you willing to pay attention? Are you going to lean in. And then he will often release a word. So here's another example with Elisha. He says, take the kings to take the arrows to Joash. Do you remember this scene? Joash is dying on his deathbed, basically. Took them and he uh, said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck three times and stopped. Prophetic trigger. Okay. And the man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck the Syria till you had destroyed it. But now you will strike Syria only three times. You getting it? Okay. Another example here. One of my favorites out of Jeremiah. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And he said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I'm ready to perform my word. And most of us go, what? How are those related? Well, they're related in the Hebrew. Shakad is the word for almond tree, and then ready to perform is the word shakad. God's playing a little word game, but he waits and says, what do you see? Da-da-da, shakad. You're right, I will shakad over my word. Do you, you hear this? Okay, it's just the way God works, and you have to get around a lot of the Greek mindset. If you didn't watch last week or didn't see the replay, I would encourage you to do that. The Greek is very analytical, very, everything's got to be just this way. Hebraic, biblical, is a little bit more this way, okay? Greek can't have anything that's not in logical sequence. Hebraic can put two things together that have an internal logic. Is God sovereign as things predestined? Yes. Does man have free will and determines these things? Yes. Wait a minute. The Greek has a huge problem with that. Hebraic goes, yeah, get over it. Okay? Because the Hebraic is steeped in the Isaiah passage that says, my ways are not your ways. 
my thoughts are not your thoughts. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways and your ways. And my thoughts and your thoughts, you just ain't going to get it. So wrestle with it if you like, but at a certain point, you're going to just have to choose. Are you going to agree with me or not? Yeah. Okay. And then he keeps going. He goes, and the word of the Lord came to me a second time. What do you see? I want you to show you this pattern. Okay, prophetic trigger and then the word. Here's another one moving forward to Jesus. Jesus is opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury and many who put it, who were rich put in much. He's just sitting there hanging out, watching. And then suddenly there's going to be a prophetic trigger. Then one poor widow came and threw in two copper coins. He's not said anything to anybody. He's not talked about being wealthy, nothing else. He just, now there's a prophetic. Do you get and he said he only says what he hears the Father. So he wouldn't move on it. There's the prophetic trigger. So he called his disciples to himself and said, Surely I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. Yeah, we're good on that? So prophetic triggers. You good with it? Okay, so we're going to look at one in a minute. But just right now, here's a quick pop quiz. How many of you like pop quizzes? Okay, this one's really hard. Okay. What are the letters? Name as they go. Come on. Come on, V, okay. Oh, you guys, come on, get a little more emphasis. S, C, M. Okay, now give me a word that starts with V. Victory, Victory okay. L, love. 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 X, x ray. What was xylophone? <laughs> okay, somebody who had that in the, yeah, good luck on this. Okay, C. Okay, M. Mary. Okay, Mary. <laughs> good, okay. So now here's another pop quiz. What are the values of these letters? Do you remember that? Okay. So what you're telling me is that letters can have a numeric value, right? That's, those are the Roman numerals, right? Y'all grew up having to learn those, right? Boy, you get some of them. Do you ever watch the old movies when they show you the film and it's in the Roman numerals and you're sitting there trying to do the math real quick while it's like, <laughs> about hurt myself, you know? Okay, wait a minute. That's 2,000 less, but it's the, the L's on this side and that's, right? I mean, it's, 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 yeah, it's something. Okay, similar idea with the Hebrew is that Hebrew doesn't have numbers and said there were letters and they have a particular value in that. We're good on that? Okay, so we're going to shift now. We're coming out of the Hebraic year 5779. We think God's been very involved in this kind of countdown for many a years. And we're shifting out of that, and we're changing now into the decade of 5780. It's the 17th Hebrew letter, and the letter is called Pei. Say Pei. Okay, you're speaking Hebrew. You're off to a good start. Yeah? Okay. There's more to it than that, but we'll get on. But I just want to show you. These in the Hebrew are pictures, okay? They are pictures. And so we look to see. Any idea what that's a picture of? A boomerang. <laughs> if, you could, yeah. if you were down in the up back, that'd be fine. You know, what? Okay, what? Well, can you see a mouth in it? No, you can't see a mouth? You have to just turn it a little bit? Okay. How about this one? Can you see an open mouth? How about this one? How about this one? No? Okay. Well, you know, what can I say? You all flunk Hebrew. Yeah, it's, it's a picture, the, the Hebrew letter for the number 80 is pay, okay? And it started, actually, there's one earlier version that is Egyptian, and it actually started looking more like this, like an oval kind of thing. And it progressed, but it's always been used as a mouth, Okay. You just okay with that? Okay. And so from that, it's a picture of a mouth. It also has a face. Because of the face, lips are part of that. Edge, okay? Lips are like the edge of things and even a border. But it also can have the meaning of like blowing on it, okay? Are you okay with this? Okay. If I showed you a picture of a car, okay? A car, what are the different things that could come out of that? What, what might a car connect you to? Give me other things. If you... Travel, what else? Speed, Speed. what else? Gas. Metal, gas, location, location. Yeah. transportation, date. date, okay. <laughs> so let me get way down there, okay. <laughs> but do you see what I'm saying? One picture now actually has affiliations and connections with other things. 
The prophetic moves in that way. The Hebrew moves in that way. You saw before, right, shakad and shakad. God has this funny way that's just like, wait a minute, God was getting punny to deliver an incredibly critical po prophetic word? Absolutely. Get over your Greek mindset, right? Say, new mind skin. New mind new mind skin. There you go. Okay, so let's keep going. So if I wanted to give you a good picture, can you see better now? That's the letter pay. Can you see a mouth in it at all now? Okay. Can you see a face in it? Yeah. Can you see one that's roaring in it? Okay, I want to, this is to me the most compelling parallel that I have because I think we're entering into a year and into a decade of the lion roaring, of the spoken word, of the mouth releasing, and there's a power to that, but it's not just of the lion then, it's what we do, how we align with what's there. You good? I'm going to keep rolling here quickly. By the way, there's pay and there's fey. Say fey. Okay, there's a difference with the Hebrew. You see that dot in the middle? That's the letter pay. And you can remember it because it kind of looks like the profile of somebody, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's a profile, and it's got the eye on the side. Now, this is the one. It's a fey if you don't have that dot in the middle. That's it. Okay. And from here, you have words like pharaoh, for instance. Okay. We'll start with that letter, but it's a fey. And by the way, sometimes they have a, there's five letters that when they put them at the end of a word, they actually change shape. That's a fey. In a sofit, that means the last position. Suddenly it changes places. Now I'll tell you, there's a lot of fun stuff that the rabbis will teach you about this. They will say, well, see, someone needs to start humil humbled, bowed down, and then when they've heard long enough, then they can stand up to speak. There's just all sorts of things that are kind of fun with it. I, I watch carefully. I try to stay within, I don't know, I've got enough Greek mindset in me. i got to stay within a certain level, right? Sometimes it can get a little too flaky. Suddenly, he associates a car with a date with a girl named Shirley who had a dog. And suddenly, he's got this prophetic word about it, the year of the dog. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute. We were back at a car. Right? Okay, I, I'm just telling you, the prophetic community can move a little bit like that. And I'm guarded about that. I want to stay anchored. I want to come back always to the word, the word, the word. So let me just give you a few other things here. Because it is a picture of a mouth or the lips there, okay? When God is putting that, we would call it a letter, but when he puts that picture at the beginning of a word, and remember at the beginning of a word in Hebrew is not going to be on the left side, it's going to be on the right. You all know that, right? Okay, that's just basic. That it's, it's like putting the sign that says, okay, if I was trying to communicate to you in, in pictures and I had a car and a house and a dog kind of thing, and then I had another word, but it was a car and it was a person and it was a road, say, you would know that they're linked together because that commonality of that picture of the car, right? It's not, not rocket science. So you have to get the Hebrew locks it, connects it in in that same way. There's something more going on. So let me give you just a few things. There are 242 biblical words that have that start with the letter pay. And because of that, they're all connected because they start with that same picture. You get on it? Okay. Of that, here's a list. 84 of these have 10 references or more. These, these are them. These are their definitions. This is the identification number. And they go from there. Oh, Okay, you with the car and the date. <laughs> Go out, get in your car, find your date. And <laughs> Actually, by the way, there is a cake in the back because Teresa has had her 60th birthday. And she does not, does not remotely, I mean, I think she's got some years and credit somewhere because it just does, doesn't. She still remembers the date. Oh, okay, the first date. Okay, got it. Okay, so there's, there's over 6,000 uses just of those 84 words. But just to give you an idea, panin is one of the biggest ones. It means before, so you get the idea again. It means face, presence, sight, countenance. Do you, do you see the continuity in that in terms of how they're connected? How about this one? Pithak, it means opening doorway or entrance. It's open, like a face is open, a mouth is open. You get that? How about this, 84 times of palal, intercede to pray or entreat. Does that make sense? Because you're, you're, you're expressing out. 
Hebrew is just kind of an amazing language. And I, I, God loves to move in images. Do you get this? This is not a book of principles. This is largely a book of stories. Do you get? That's why Jesus always taught in parables, because as soon as he starts to speak in a parable, everybody, even if their eyes are open, their mind starts to visualize. The image is there, right? And the image imprints, and it's got a richness to it because it's a language of the heart. And sometimes you got to get past all this Greek stuff here, okay? Okay, so we're going to keep going on this. Get on this? Okay, so I think we're in a decade <laughs> where there will be a tremendous amount of focus upon the wor- what is being said, what's coming out of your mouth, what's coming out of our mouth, for good or evil. And... But there's also, what else can come out? What else can be connected? Laughter, right? Proceeds, okay? Joy proceeds. Praise proceeds, okay? There's an amazing amount of things, but I feel like we're in a decade now. You'll see nuances for it each year in this decade. But there's going to be a tremendous focus by the Lord. So, pay, word for mouth. From the mouth, it means blowing. It means edge, portion, or side. It can also connect to commandment, to eat, to end, entry, a sentence, a sound, speech, spoken talk, and two-edged. How's that for something? Two-edged. Very interesting when you go in and look at the Hebrew on this. When they get to places where they talk about a two-edged sword, it's like a two-mouthed sword. The two parts that can cut into something, eat something, chomp into something, double-edged sword is this word connected okay it's used almost 500 times in 460 verses not that you care that much but one of the things that are very important in anything this is a standard biblical studies concept when you have a new word whether it's in greek or hebrew you want to see where it is first used for this simple reason we don't think god has been cavalier with his word we believe that the first time he uses a word he's trying to tell us something that's important do you get that So I always go to that, and I pay attention to the first word because I want to see what's God saying because, again, is it a prophetic trigger? So here it is. This is when God has to find Cain after he's killed his brother Abel. And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Okay, pretty heavy duty, right? First use of the word mouth in the Hebrew, okay, in the Bible, is connected with actually the earth taking in the blood of the innocent. So I'm just going to give you a little prophetic trigger. God is going to be doing some powerful accounting in this decade about the blood of the innocents. Just just giving, yeah, okay. This is just me looking at the trigger is the Hebrew calendar, the year. This is the first time it's used. This is also, so you know, this is a, an awareness of how land can become cursed. Do you notice? You are cursed where? Not from God, from the earth. Okay. There's an issue of innocent bloodshed, and I think we're going to see a decade where God is really squaring that up. Okay? So let me just keep going. Now, connected into, when you get into the whole idea about speech, about speaking, we start to look at some other Hebrew words that are connected. And this word, dabar, it's properly used, it actually means to arrange. So if you think about it, it's about like arranging your words in a sentence. Do you get that? Hopefully you do that. With you, sometimes not so much the right order. Yeah? Okay. (laughs) Sorry. So, to speak, answer, appoint, bid, command, commune, declare, destroy, give, name, promise, pronounce, rehearse, say, speak, talk, teach, tell. You think those are all connected in the mouth? Okay. Yeah. And so those, that occurs almost 1,100 times in over 1,000 verses. And again, we look for first use. And it's an interesting time. The first time this happens is then God spoke to Noah. First time that word's used. You're going to, wait a minute, what about Genesis 1? We'll get there. 
But what he says to know is go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out every living thing of all flesh that is with you, birds and cattle and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. It's interesting the first time that this talks about God speaking, using that word, okay, is when he's bringing somebody out of an old model, out of an old wineskin. The ark was something that took him, it's estimated, 60 to 100 years to build. And then they were in it only for a year and 10 days. And God spoke to him and said, go out of the ark. Now's the time. Something about breaking out the old wineskin, whatever that served, we're going to see more and more of that continuing to happen. Just giving you that. Okay, Amar. Say Amar. Amar. Another related word to say, answer, appoint, avouch, bid, boast, call, certify, challenge, charge, command, commandment, commune, consider, declare. Are you getting all this right? Okay, that's used... 5,100 times in almost 4,000 some verses. The first use, you probably know this one. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. I'm just, I'm trying to real quickly give you a flavor for this reason. We're about to cross over into a new year on the 29th of September. Say 29th of September. Okay, it's that night Okay, that night at sundown, because that's how the biblical calendar works, we cross into the year 5780. And we cross into a new decade of that and a significance. And I think there's going to be so much about what has come from the, the mouth of God, how we align with that, and where it's all going. You got this? Now, one of the things I always like to do, God is the Alpha and the Okay, there's this thing, a beginning and the end. So one of the things I'm always intrigued to do, I, I think I mentioned to you, there are 395 verses that use either the Hebrew or the Greek word for mouth. This is all of them. And I could put this up on a document if you want, because part of the way it links is it has the verse, but you can click on the link and go right to it electronically and look at it. And I've been kind of walking through these and sorting them. But one of the things I'm intrigued about is where was the last reference about mouth, particularly about the mouth of God? Because we just saw that he said in Genesis, right, let there be light. Do you know, you know the power in God's mouth to create by speaking, right? Okay. You know that you've been created in God's image. So we're coming into a time of understanding that in a whole new way. And having a responsibility of that in so many ways. We'll look at some scriptures in a second. But I want to just bring you the out the omega, the end part. The last references to the mouth of God come from this, from Revelation 19. Now I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse. And he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations." You need to get how scripture moves and God creates in Genesis and God wraps things up in justice in Revelation. Okay, you getting this? And the mouth of God is involved in both of those. Okay? To create, to hold accountability, to raise up and to tear down. Okay, so let's just hit some i got to move a little faster here. I just want to hit some things that I think are going to be important verses this next year. The reason being this, when I was getting before the Lord, I kept coming, Lord, what is left? What do we need to wrap up to wrap up this decade? It's really important how you finish something so that you can start fresh. Do you get that? And so it's like, okay, what do we need to do? But I knew we were coming into this decade connected with declaration, with the mouth, with the words spoken, etc. So it's like, Lord, what do we need to declare? What do we need to do so that we wrap up this year and we cross over? And that's where you connected the dots for me about saying you have nothing to declare when you cross a border. You're about to cross a border, which is in time, and you're going to have plenty that you need to declare. 
for reasons like this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. You know this verse? Yeah. I usually say life and death. I did, I had, I'm going to have to correct this. Okay? It, it's saying, but again, get behind this in the Hebraic understanding, not in your Greek. In your Greek, you've just kind of got this light thing. You do not get the power of the words that you have. Are we speaking curses? Are we speaking death? Okay, there's, there's, <laughs> be aware. One of the things is very interesting. Those who love it will eat its fruit. You got to remember when you speak out, when you release your words, it affects the atmosphere, even if there's no human being around, okay? You affect the atmosphere because there are non-human beings around, right? Okay. It affects the person who hears you, correct? Why you love? Oh, okay. Or, oh, you just look amazing, right? It affects. But thirdly, you eat its fruit. You may have released it out there to affect things, but you, cons- you eat on that. That's what this is saying. Okay? Very interesting dynamic. Let's keep going. This just has intrigued me. Again, this is the salvation verse that you all know. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus, your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised you from the dead, you will be saved. It just intrigues me that it doesn't say if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Instead, it says what? If you confess. There's so often when you're moving in this, and I think we're going to move forward and we've got to learn, there's things you're going to need to confess and declare out loud. I don't know that your heart will be completely aligned with it, but you're going to need to go in obedience to what God gives you and let your heart catch up because this is the way it's written. I'm sorry. I did not write this in Paul did. Romans, right? Romans 10. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart. So I think there's a pattern there. How about this one? This is out of one of my favorite ones out of Psalm 81. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open wide your open your mouth wide and I will fill it. Open your mouth wide. Okay. It, it's an important thing of what's who's filling your mouth. I'm just okay. <laughs> who's filling your mouth? Where is what's coming out of your mouth coming from? Okay, this is going to be a, this is not just a one night thing. This is not just a one year thing. This God is going to be showing you. We are watching this stuff play out now. You are watching the tongue have the power of death and life all over the place on the media, right? Oh my goodness. And it can be just one careless thing decades ago. And it's coming back around, okay? Powerful, powerful. But this whole idea about who puts what in your mouth goes back to this. This is from Jeremiah when God called him and he said, I'm just a youth. And God says, do not say, do not say I am a youth for you shall go to all to whom I send you and whatever I command you, you shall speak. You getting this? Critical passage for all of us. Do not say that you're slow of speech. Do not say that you're this or that. You're rich, you're poor, you're white, you're black, you're male, you're female, you're old, you're young, you're whatever. Do not say that. You shall go to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Not speak of your own account, not just blah, 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 blah. okay? Here's the rest of this. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Say, touched my mouth. See, this is part of what, okay, God, how do you want to touch? Because again, God said, but what's he given in me to be released? For whatever reason, he likes to have people engaged in his process. He wants us to co-create with him, right? But he's the initiator in it all. See, I have set this day, this day, sorry, let me read that again. See, (laughs) I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Do you just see the whole very thing? We just looked at Genesis and Revelation. He's now given this to Jeremiah to walk in. 
And if he's given it to Jeremiah, then he may have an assignment for you. Actually, let me say that. He does have an assignment for you. Because where you go, what you say, who's put that in your mouth, what's released, the timing of it can tear down, can destroy, can build up, and can plant. And you know what? Here's the issue. You can't be all one or the other just based on your personality. You can't be all this way to everybody. Oh, you're so lovely. You're so beautiful. You know, if God gives you that and that's what you're supposed to do, then right. But if you go to somebody and God needs you to correct them and bring it up short and you're just blowing all happy smoke at them, you're accountable for that. You're accountable for not releasing the word of the Lord or so soft coating it that they're just like, well, okay. I used to be that way, so you know. Okay, before God had to take me through a lot of breaking process to get where I'd be very candid. It's in a group of people, and I was trying to express that I was upset about something, and I'm, I'm going round and round all these different directions, trying to be so indirect. And they finally just looked at me and said, so are you upset at me or not? <laughs> okay, I, that was a training. It was about people pleasing. It was concern about fear of man. It was all sorts of stuff. And God just had to break that off of me over time. You got this? Again, his touching our mouth. Here's another one. The setup for it. In the year the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings, and with two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Here's the context, and they're crying. Again, do you get this? The, the mouth is involved again. The praise is released. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out. you got to get the power of what's going on. You have to see you have been made just a little lower than the angels. Hello? And the house was filled with smoke. So I said, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. There we go again. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal with which he had taken from tongs from the altar, and he touched my mouth, and with it he said, Behold, this has touched your lips your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. Do you get how this was connecting with the earlier words that were released in here? Don't be hung up on that. It gets purged. Now get your mouth ready. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people. You getting this again? hear the word, things are shaken, we come to ourselves, we're at end of ourselves, what gets put in our mouth? He puts the words in there, he purifies, he gives us the mission. And then you end up with this, can these dry bones live? You know this passage, right? Ezekiel 37. Again, he said to me, prophesy. There's another connected word, right? Speak it out. He didn't say hold the staff over them, okay? He didn't say dance a jig, speak it. Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of what? The Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath. Do you see again? The Lord God says to these bones. Thus says the Lord God. Again, these are all connected in. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. Not just in my own time, in my own way, and in and in, as I was commanded. And, and as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling and the bones came together bone to bone. Are you getting the? Okay. I know you know a lot of this stuff, but I'm just trying to bring it up for you. And this, do you like this? This is an artwork, but it's all microphones hanging out. <laughs> Welcome to what is really kind of a good picture of today, right? Cameras, recorders, everywhere. 
You know, we, we have a Google Home thing here, and I go, hey, Google, and it answers, and it can play music and stuff like that. People are like, oh, you want that in there listening? I go, like, well, we try not to say anything that's going to be a problem. You know, I mean, it's not that complicated. I mean, right? Okay. But these words from Jesus, for out of the abundance of the heart, the what? Mouth speaks. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. You know this, but I'm just, right? For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Okay? There's an accountability guy that's, that's gonna, that God is raising up, and it always starts first with what? The body of Christ. Okay? We're you first. What are we saying? How are we saying it? So, one of my favorite psalms right here, Psalm 141. Set a guard over my mouth, O Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Everybody pray this out loud together. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Yeah? Okay. I'm just telling you, it's just, it's very interesting when I started to do this breakdown on all the words about um, the mouth there's actually, it's a much lower percentage that it's God's mouth. The biggest percentage is about what's coming out of man's, woman's mouth. Right? That's, that's really the big thrust. But it's from God when we get the word that we're releasing it in alignment with his. So how about this? Just some parts out of Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonder among the peoples. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. You good on this? Do you see the words? Sing, proclaim, declare, say. This is, there's, there's a shift that we need to make sure. Well, I'm just not that vocal. Okay, well, your issue isn't with me. Your issue is with your Bible. Your issues with the Bible. I don't care if you say anything here or not, but you, you got something you got to, well, I only pray in private and quiet and to myself and I don't say anything out loud. Okay, well, you, you got to, you know, Scotty gave us a quote we've used for years. Your voice is your address in the spirit. Okay. Your voice is your address in the spirit. Okay. We're, we're working a lot with the inmates on this, right? We're trying to help them understand the power of declaration and how to, how to use it against the enemy, how to stand and how to use it to bless and release blessing, the impact they can have on other people. So this is another one. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. This is the glory of God's people. You get this? High praises in their what? What did I tell you about two-edged? It's the same word. Okay? The root of that word, two-edged sword, goes back to mouth again. You see, we are to go, we are to do this process. We are to ascend in worship, and then we descend in declaration. And that's what Scott is going to move in some of that. Okay, we loose praise, we get connected, and then out of that, we make declarations. So here's to me is one of the most compelling pictures that will just help you understand this year, but this decade. The lion of Judah, out of his mouth, okay? Words to create, words that have power to create, to heal, okay? Words that can also carry a two-edged sword to set things aright in justice and in vengeance. So, do you have something to declare? Yes or no? Okay, that was lame. Do you have something to declare? Yes. Do you have something to declare? Yes. Do you have something to declare? Yes. Okay, Father, you heard them. You heard them, Father. They have something to declare. They have a voice that you have given them. They have an alignment in Christ Jesus because of the blood. 
and they are empowered by the Holy Spirit who resides in them in the same quality and quantity as he does in Jesus. And Jesus said, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and even greater works will he do. So Father, guide us now in this time. Show us how to align, to praise, and to declare out of that power. We seal the scriptures here that they would bring life and light to us. And the enemy can't steal them because we're going to cross into this decade correctly. In the name of Jesus, amen.